Check, check. Can you guys hear? Can you guys hear okay? Whatever. All right. Uh, I'm going to get started here talking about context and features. Um, so uh, my name is Andrew Roos. Uh, I'm a Drupal developer out of San Diego. I work for Achieve Internet. Uh, and I'm here to tell you about two of my favorite modules for uh, planning, uh, organizing, and managing big websites, context and features. Um, so I'm going to give you kind of a basic overview of what the modules do um, and what I use them for. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what some other people use them for and how I use them a little bit differently. Um, but I'm going to give you a, a little overview. Um, I'm going to go through a demo um, of each module. Um, and uh, then I'll have some time for some questions after that. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to hurry through everything because last time I did this, it went over and I want to have time for questions. So uh, if you uh, have any questions about anything, just stop me, um, stop me and ask. Um, so a uh, little bit of background about the uh, context and features module modules. Um, they're developed by, by Development Seed, uh, and they came out uh, as part of the Open Atrium project. Uh, and there's some of the um, really uh, important modules that, uh, that make that uh, project work. Um, oftentimes you'll hear them um, as uh, there's a session later on the black box trio. Uh, this is uh, context, fe features, and spaces. Um, but uh, I generally don't use spaces because it's uh, highly organic, um, and uh, I'm using this at a purely administrative level uh, for me to manage my own own sites, and uh, particularly for for one site. Um, features, as I'll get to later, is great for moving things from one site to another, um, or getting things that are replicable. Um, but I particularly am interested in its use case for moving from one server, which is a development server, to a testing server, uh, to a production server. Because one of the biggest challenges uh, I've come across is how to stage things. And um, features really helps you with that. Um, I'm going to start talking about context. Uh, context is a, a kind of a little bit of a, a simpler module to understand. Um, and uh, it kind of helps you with your planning of your site. Uh, if you try to plan a site uh, and try to say which pages are uh, here and um, which ones of these are view pages, which ones are content pages and stuff, you know it can be a pain. You get a really, really long list of pages. Um, but one of the nice things about context is it allows you to organize your site on a section level. Uh, meaning you can say, you know, I've got uh, a section that encompasses uh, a few pieces of content. Uh, several views, um, maybe some custom pieces. I'll show you how to add custom pieces um, in a little while. Um, but you can make those all part of a, a context, and you can reference them um, as one context, which uh, I'll show you why, why that's really beneficial. But it, um, for one thing, it makes your sites uh, easier to think about. Because instead of having you know 40 pages, some of which are views, some are content items, all this stuff, um, you've got maybe eight or ten or twelve contexts and it helps me wrap my head around what part of the site I'm working on um, and say uh, I, I can say this part this part's looking good it's done um, on the on the context level and it includes everything in that context so I find it's really helpful to be able to think about uh, and organize my sites uh, with context um, the other thing that's really nice about context is it controls blocks for you uh, which is huge. I've, I've heard of people say that it's worth it just for that feature. Because if you try to use uh, page visibility settings on blocks, it can be very, very painful. Uh, particularly um, because you're trying to say what paths uh, blocks should show up on. Uh, you know, aliases aren't respected there, so you need to you know, do some intelligence about it. You know, is it a node? And, 
Um, it, can, it can get really complicated really, really quickly. But with context, you can set uh, a whole range of triggers. Um, you can say, if I'm on a particular view, trigger the context. If I'm on a particular content type, any content type, or any content of that type, trigger the context. If I have one particular node that's just maybe you know about us or a top level navigation, can trigger a context. So there's lots of things you can put into a context, and you can manage your blocks on the context level. It makes it a lot easier than saying I want this on you know these eight pages, and one of them's a view, and three of them are nodes, and uh, um, it, it just makes it a lot easier to uh, to manage blocks on the context uh, context level rather than the page level. Uh, another great feature is uh, theming variables. Um, so you can have a section class um, for each context, which is great if you want to visually separate things out. So you can say, um, you know, I'm in the developer section of the site I'm building, uh, and I want to use kind of a different style sheet or something like that, or a bunch of different styles. Yeah, questions? Does that just go into your body type? Uh, you can actually theme it anywhere you want, so if you wanted it to go somewhere else, um, you could put them there. Uh, they're variables, so they're accessible really anywhere, but by default, yes, they go into the body. Um, and I find, you know, it's great uh, as far as CSS to be able to say, uh, you know, uh, developer dot whatever, um, and that's a body class. And you can define them for any context, so it makes it really helpful in visually separating the sections. So uh, let me actually show you a demo of some of that stuff. So I've got a basic sandbox here that I've used for a couple other uh, presentations. It's got a lot of random stuff uh, in here. Um, usually I've just had people uh, vote on what kind of context types I want to make. So uh, I've got a few made here. Um, but uh, I'm going to... Uh, go to structure, context, and um, you see I have a few uh, contexts here. Uh, the example I'm going to use here is surfboards. Um, so uh, this is uh, just a random site, but say I had a, a section that was all about surfboards, and it wasn't really related to um, too much stuff on the other site, but it was a completely different section. So I wanted to um, make sure it was uh, classified as its own context and I could address it differently. Um, so there's some, some basic things you want to fill out uh, the name uh, and the these things are, are kind of complicated at first. I find the values kind of the only thing that's important uh, at least when you're starting. Um, once you've used it uh, heavily uh, you can get uh, into the more complex uh, namespace and attribute, um, but for the most part, when you're starting, uh, all you're going to change, you're going to leave the attribute and the uh, namespace blank, and you're just going to have fill in different values. Um, when you have lots of context and you need to organize them better, uh, that's when you'll start using namespaces. But it's kind of an advanced feature; it's not really important for getting grasp of it. Um, so. Here is where you define the conditions or the triggers uh, that trigger this context. So I've said any node page for a surfboard. So you make a surfboard uh, node type, it's going to be part of this context no matter what. Um, you can also set uh, things on your path. So if you wanted a particular page like about surfboards, um, you, could set the, uh, you could set the path. Um, or you can pick it from a menu if it has a menu entry as well. Um, also, um, if you've got some particular views set up, um, you can get those to trigger the context. Um, and you can add uh, user pages for particular roles into a context too. Um, so those are some, uh, some powerful triggering conditions that uh, help you out a lot more than page visibility settings. Um, so uh, that's how you kind of group pages together. So you see here I've got basically, I've said, uh, my view, uh, which is the page view of surfboards, and any surfboard node, um, that basically defines my context. And um, down here below, you can see the block configuration. Uh, so I picked a few random blocks um, that I wanted to be part of this context. 
Um, these are just default blocks because it's a sandbox, but if I were to have made a view uh, with a block, uh, I could include it here, and it would be shown on any page within that context. Um, and you can control the order uh, and how these show up. Um, so this is a this is a really valuable setting if you've ever tried to manage uh, blocks with the uh, page visibility. The other thing I wanted to show you was the theme variables, um, where you can do the uh, the section title, section subtitle, uh, and section class. The section class is the one really important theme variable that I really like to be able to have, um, and you can specify anything here. So. Um, it makes it real easy to separate things out for CSS. So those are some really valuable, um, valuable ways to use context, um, particularly uh, to group pages into uh, larger sections, um, which is helpful uh, on the administrative level, actually configuring it. But it's also just really helpful the way you think about your site, because you can think about a few contexts versus a lot of pages, a lot of views, and a lot of random things. It just keeps me, uh, it keeps me able to think about my site in a more manageable context. So uh, I think it's important on several levels to, to use context. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, one question a lot of people have is what really warrants having a context? Uh, a lot of people will say almost any page on your site, even if it's only a particular page, can uh, warrant the context uh, because the block, the block uh, settings and the triggers are, are so powerful. Um, but uh, I usually say if it's, got, if it's a section of two or three related pages, probably warrants the context. Um, and also I particularly like having a context specifically for the front page. Um, so I can control what blocks go on there, and I'm not messing with anything else. Um, and also, uh, you can stack contexts, which means you can have a context apply to two different pages separately. Like, for example, if I said, uh, this context applies to all surfboard nodes, but this context applies to node slash 347 or something like that. Um, that would provide a double uh, context, in which case you would get uh, both of the blocks from both contexts. Um, so sometimes I've found that uh, we want to have a, a section of the site, like uh, the developer center or something like that, um, and we want all the same blocks on most of the pages, but say, for example, on the, this particular view, it needs a, a few extra blocks or something like that. You can make a sub-context there uh, that will add those additional blocks to that page, uh, while well, the main context still controls everything. So you can't actually um, nest uh, context and, um, and get some control there. And then, uh, like I said, it, it's always valuable to have it on the front page so you can define, define what's there. Um, so, uh, so that's most of the stuff I wanted to show you. Context. Any questions about context now? No? Okay, cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit about features then. All right, features. Uh, it has a bunch of different uses. Um, it was actually um, when it was when it was designed. The biggest use I think uh, was to be able to create reusable components, and it does that really well. Um, what it actually does at its core level is to export things from the database into code, um, and that makes it much easier to pass around. So if I uh, wanted to create a feature, you know, I could give it to you. It's a lot more portable as a piece of code. Uh, than as some database queries or something like that, or an export or, or something. So, um, uh, so it makes it really easy to pass things around to get things from one site to another. Uh, basically, what all it's doing is exporting uh, database objects into uh, pseudo modules, or actually they're full-fledged modules, but they're called. Uh, some people refer to them as pseudo modules because they don't do a whole lot until you get under the hood of them. Uh, with them, and I'll show you how to do that and actually make some full-featured, powerful modules out of your features. Um, the reason I personally like to uh, use features to get all my database settings into code is for versioning, um, which is just uh, a, a huge, huge problem um, if you've got things in the database and you need to version those. Um, and you know, how do you, how do you do that? I mean, you could version your databases, but, you know, moving little pieces and parts from the database is a huge hassle. Um, so the more things you can get 
out of the database and into code the better. Um, personally, I'm talking about um, big, powerful, complex sites um, where there's not a huge amount of, uh, the administrators don't need control over every little piece. Most of it's very well defined and the developers have control over everything. Um, and the administrators have uh, access to create their content and kind of do their basic things. But uh, we're trying to get as much of uh, as much of the site as we can into code and really only leaving the database for content that the users are going to put in or the administrators or the content editors. Um, so uh, we use uh, version control to be able to um, you know roll back from one to another uh, and manage changes because a lot of times uh, you know we'll build something and then all of a sudden we need to change the view or we need to uh, remove this page or do something like that um, and uh, features let you manage that. Uh, another great thing about features is it works with context really well. So if you've defined a lot of things in a context, uh, you can put that context into a feature. Um, and uh, it makes it really easy to manage your context and all the views and stuff associated with it. Um, also, these things can always be overridden um, in the database. Or, so uh, even though they're defined in code, um, say I want to push something uh, from development uh, up to test, and someone takes a look at it, they say they, they don't really like the way this is, so they want to change the view. They can actually go in and override that. Um, and they can actually have, have that effect there. Uh, just because it's defined in code doesn't mean it can't be overwritten in the database is the point. Um, so you can change some of those things. Um, and uh, if you need to uh, get those changes exported, um, you can do that too. Um, so it's, uh, it's really beneficial there. Um, so as I was mentioning before, um, features uh, create what a lot of people call these pseudo modules right out of the box. But one of the things that's really great about features is that when you regenerate a feature, it rewrites all this code for you. But it does it all in a very structured way and include files. And it actually does not touch your module file. Uh, your module file has one line in it and it includes a features include file, which then includes everything important. Um, so your module file is free to add anything you want in there. Uh, and that will take your pseudo module to a full-fledged, powerful module that's based on features. I actually use this uh, tactic um, to create node modules. Um, if, you've, uh, if you've created uh, any modules that define nodes, you know there are a lot of hooks and a lot of, uh, a lot of things you need to define to create a node module. But um, by using features uh, to define a content type, uh, put it in the feature, uh, everything's in there, and then you still have the full power of the module file to do anything and everything you want. Um, so it's a great starting point for anything uh, that involves you know, creating nodes or content types. Um, particularly, things I put in there uh, all the time are hook menus, uh, hook blocks, um, views hooks, uh, pretty much anything that I want to customize, anything that falls within that feature. So let me show you what the, uh, the features interface looks like. Okay, so uh, here's the, the features uh, landing page. And there's two things you can do here. You can either manage existing features uh, or create features. Uh, when you're first checking this module out, um, there's not going to be anything on the manage features page, so everything's going to look blank. You're going to want to go over to the create features page um, where you can define a name and a description for your feature. Um, these are just what the name of the module is going to be in the description. I always recommend putting a version number here, even though it's optional, but it helps you track uh, which feature you're on. Like, for example, uh, if I'm working on a feature for uh, a period of a few months, I'll go through 30 revisions of it or something like that. And I want to make sure every time I push it um, from one server to another that I have actually changed that file and the version has changed. So I highly recommend always adding a version here, something like uh, 6.x-1.0 to start. Um, 
and I'll go as high as you know 31 or something as I'm doing lots and lots of changes to features. Uh, also, uh, URL of uh, update XML. This is a really cool feature. A lot of people don't use it because it requires a feature server. Uh, but feature server is a really cool project um, that can allow uh, your features to uh, check in with a server, see when they need to be updated. Uh, it's a particularly good feature uh, if you're using features to pass things around. Um, so uh, if you're developing something for another site uh, and they want to know that it's updated and you've got a feature server, they can um, use the update status module to be able to uh, check your features up to date. Uh, I don't really use that feature a whole lot in this particular uh, application because I'm talking about single sites, but it's kind of a nice feature to, to know it's there. So I'm going to call this feature surfing USA. So let's go. Surfing. Um, and then uh, I, I was kind of confused at this point when I first uh, first used features because I was like, "Well, I've, I've named it, and, and now now what? Uh, there's a there's a blank thing to add components." Uh, but actually, this fills up when you when you do add components here. So uh, go ahead and add something like a content type. Um, you can say what you want to add. Uh, I'm going to add surfboards in here. Uh, and then you'll see it adds uh, all the stuff on the side. And as you do more and more of this, you'll get more and more stuff built over here. And it'll tell you exactly what is in your feature. Um, so uh, there are a bunch of things you can add out of the box here. Uh, but there are also lots of extension modules that uh, enable you to add other things. There's features extra um, and, and a few other extension modules. Plus there's an API um, that you can use to actually export your own things. Uh, I highly recommend doing that because uh, out of the box, I would say this uh, moves lots of things that you need, but it doesn't necessarily move everything you need. Um, there are lots of things uh, in staging uh, that aren't covered by this, like, for example, you know, system settings forms, um, blocks that are created uh, within the database. Um, the, there are some things that, that don't really move well with it out of the box. So... Um, I highly encourage you to look into the extension modules which add things to this list that can be moved. And if you are a module uh, maintainer or if you uh, need something to get moved, um, if you want to actually add those, uh, I think it would be uh, great for Drupal to kind of cover the last 15 to 20 percent of things that, that don't get moved there. Because um, that takes us from um, uh, a pretty good staging strategy to, hey, hey this actually moves everything I need. Um, uh, I'll, I'll show you how you can move some of the other things. Um, they, it can be done without without these, uh, but it certainly is nice to have these available. Um, so you can add uh, things like uh, like views. So I'll add the surfboard um, context. Like I said, um, you can add the context. So now I've got the definition of all those things. So. Uh, Previously, I created the context. The context has the view and the content type in there. Uh, and then I add the view, the content type, and the context to the feature. So everything I've done, I can go download feature, and it presents me with a downloadable um, pseudo module here. Um, so I'll just open this up real quick and give you a look at what that creates. So you can see it is uh, pretty similar to, uh, to a lot of modules. You can see the module file and the info file. Um, if I open up this module file, you'll see that it only has, uh, has one line in there. And it includes uh, the features.inc. Um, and this, these files, uh, node.inc, views.inc, features.inc, and defaults, this is where all the, the magic is happening for features. Uh, you don't have to ever touch these, um, and you can touch the module file, which is, uh, uh, like I said, really powerful. Uh, one thing that I add to the module files uh, a lot of the time to kind of cover that extra gap of the 15 to 20 percent, um, it doesn't actually move, are update hooks. Uh, so I'll actually write update hooks uh, that do Drupal executes of forms. Um, so if I wanted to, um, for example, change the, the home page of the site. 
I would go to uh, site information uh, and I would Drupal execute that form. Um, it's real simple. It's, uh, it's only a couple lines of code. Um, but you can get that into a hook update. And that way it lives with your module. You do have to run update.php when you update that if you're using that strategy. Um, and it'll go through and it'll do all the settings. So you can actually use that strategy to move everything and anything um, that you want because you are you know, involving the database at that point. Question? What about menus? Have you had any uh, times where you've had to move updates to menus and keep that? Is that able to do with features? Um, no. I uh, I think there I think that might be included in the features extra module yeah. to move menus. Um, I haven't actually done that. Um, I I have read, uh, written some update hooks that make some modification to uh, menus. Um, but I haven't done it a whole lot, so I haven't really looked into which uh, extension module. But I do believe there is an extension module for that. All right. Um, how much time do I have? Uh, are there any questions on uh, either the features or the context? No? Okay, cool. Um, another thing I wanted to uh, make a note of is that um, if you're going to be using features, uh, uh, I recommend reading up on the kit specification, uh, which is something that's uh, written by one of the, the dev C, one of the developers of it, um, uh, Jeff Nicholas, I think. Uh, and it actually uh, is basically a specification on uh, how you should name things to avoid collisions in features. Um, if you're uh, doing a site with lots of uh, lots of features and you're naming them um, very uh, short uh, titles, uh, sometimes you'll name things the same um, and uh, and they'll collide. So uh, read up on the specification and it'll tell you um, kind of namespacing best practices, what you're supposed to call things um, to make sure they don't kind of bump in with, with other things. Um, so that's a good thing to, to read up on if you're going to be making lots of features. Yeah, question? Do you have features with, with Git? Um, I have. Uh, more, uh, I probably use SVN a little bit more often, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you're using uh, version control, it uh, works great. Yep? If you have blocks that you've created in the database and they're in a context, and you export the context, it does not export the block? No, it does not. Uh, I define all my blocks in hook block uh, because I like having them in code. Uh, that's one of the things I uh, generally don't give my administrators access to do. Um, I have them fill out content and nodes, but I try to keep them away from blocks. Uh, particularly, I don't want anyone using the block administration interface because it's too confusing for me to explain to other people. Uh, and uh, I have had some clients who are uh, okay with the uh, context and actually will go in and edit those. Uh, but I try to try to keep people away from doing blocks in the database. I define those in code. If they want to change, they ask me. I make the change in code, committed to version control. Uh, do you see a question back here somewhere? No? Yep. Um, I have a question about stacking context. So uh -huh. Stack to context, how do you reorder the blocks so you want to go to any way you want? So like, say you have a, a global context with like three blocks defined and you have one specifically for a page and you have a block in there and you want to like um, there's not a good way in between the context. Like if you wanted to sh them to show up in like a kind of a linked fashion, I don't really know a good way to do that. Uh, they will show up one on top of each other. Um, I think the default sort order is in the, uh, the ID of the context. So whichever one you create first, I think is on top. That's worked okay for me in most of my applications. So I hadn't really had to do that. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some way uh, some ways around that that you could put in your module file. Um, so uh, there's definitely some way to do that, but I haven't actually run into that, so I'm not sure. Um, let's see, yeah. Crystal. So I'm curious since the question of blocks came up when you when you build a context, are you finding that your users find thinking about their sites easier because now all these different things that show stuff on a final page are pulled together 
Absolutely. Uh, take it for that because it, at the beginning that's certainly confusing for many people. Oh, that this is a plot. This is not a node. This uh -huh. is a node. This is a view. Oh, that's yet another thing. Exactly. And you know now it's at least sort of coherent. But does that really lower the barrier for fresh people? It absolutely uh, makes my clients. It's easier for them to tell me where something is. Um, a lot of times, I find they get lost when they're looking for a particular page, or if they're trying to talk. If they're trying to talk about a section with three or four pages involved, they get very confused very quickly trying to say which pages are where. Um, but if they can say, "Hey, I'm looking at the surfboard context, and one of the pages needs to be altered," um, it's a lot easier for them to think about it at a higher level than saying, "You know, um, uh, this page um, needs these updates, and this one." Needs, uh, needs these updates. Uh, I, I find that they're much more comfortable um, with a few objects to think about than a whole bunch of views and pages. Anyone else? Okay. Um, so uh, in conclusion, I just uh, want to say I really like these modules uh, for uh, planning, organizing, and uh, managing your code, particularly on uh, big complex websites where you want as much in the code as you get. One of the um, struggles with Drupal in staging uh, is the separation, or uh, I guess uh, the connectivity between uh, settings and content. They live in the database, they live very close together, and it's uh, been something that's very difficult for Drupal to handle. Uh, but uh, features lets you pull a lot of those settings out. Uh, and it's getting close to being able to pull them all out of the way. Um, so uh, if, you, if you use them and if the community grows, uh, more of these extension modules will come out and we'll really get to that place where we can move everything over with features and it'll be a lot easier. So uh, I'm really excited to see where it's going. It's a relatively new project uh, and to see where it's come in so little time, um, where it's going to go in the future, uh, I, I'm sure it's, it's going to be great. So I'm really excited about it. Sam? Um. Do you ever use these contexts that you create as a package to start up a new project? Um, sort of. Uh, it sounds kind of like you're leaning towards a distribution, kind of. No, I mean, yeah. if, you're start, if you have certain contexts and certain, uh, I guess, uh, I have types. I have several you know, base features for blog, uh, wiki, calendar, events. Um, that I use, uh, and it makes it a lot easier than having to set those up every time. Um, so yeah, I do have some base features. Okay. Well, I mean, if, you, if you're if you talking about base place to start, you are essentially talking about distribution. I mean, that's what you start with, whether you start with the out-of-the-box distribution or make your own. But that's that's how you do that. If you want to start in a certain place, you just create a distribution. Yeah. Uh, feature is really nice for, you know, I want one thing specifically that maybe you don't need a whole distribution for. It's like, uh, I want blogs, but you know, I want blogs that work in the way I've defined that they should work. Not necessarily you know, blog module blogs, but you know, blogs how I see blogs. Uh, and I, I have those defined and I can pass them out to sites. So uh, I do have a, a, a base set that I use and a lot of times when people you know, they want a wiki. But in order for that, I mean for that feature, say if you have a picture gallery feature that you want, you want to create, create them, oh, yeah. Uh, but it comes with certain blocks that you want to have, and so you want to export your context and your blocks and everything. So uh, I guess the, you really have to bring your blocks into that code as well, right? So, but you have you can have that and just drop it into a project and say, here's your picture gallery. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Krishna. Uh, another question, because you're talking about exporting things into code. Uh, when you enable a feature on a new site, does the definition of all those settings go back into the database, or does it stay in code? I, I know I can check this myself. But Wait, sorry, can you say that one more time? So, you, you bring your feature to a new site, you enable it, yep. does the definition of all those settings now, you know, say views, do they stay in code? Or no, it's it in the file database? until overwritten. Okay. Um, actually, yeah, let me, let me show you uh, so one thing. you get the speed improvements of the view in code? Until you override it. Once you override it, it lives in the database again. Um, so if you touch anything on that view um, or uh, anything that's defined uh, within the feature, uh, it will be overridden and it, it lives in the database again. Um, however, you know if there's an update to the feature, um, you can do that and uh, everything will come back. But then you'd lose your changes. Um, so actually, yeah, let me um, show you that part real quick. 
it's pretty simple when you think about it because uh, no, none of the modules really know about this code in teachers. It, it, you only, uh, you know, so they, they really can't do anything with it. So once you have to, have to change things, you have to go back to how the module works, which is what the data is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, I showed you the create page, um, and I kind of skimmed over the manage page, uh, which I meant to touch on a little bit. Um, but uh, if you've got a lot of features here, which I often do in a lot of these sites, uh, all your features will be listed out here. And uh, what's particularly interesting is the state. Uh, the state will be either default, overridden, or needs review. Um, default just means it's uh, looking at the files. Uh, everything's coming from the files. You're getting your speed boost from the files. Uh, nothing's coming from the database. If it says overridden, that means something has changed. Um, we are looking to the database for that thing. Uh, they should still grab uh, code for unrelated things. So if you're messing with, if you've overridden uh, view A in a feature, uh, view B should still be read from code. But uh, if it's overridden, some of this stuff is going to be read from the database. Um, and uh, if you click, uh, click this, it'll give you uh, a list of everything that's, that's there. And you've got checkboxes here for revert components. So that way you can set it back to the state it was given. So um, it's, it's actually really nice to be able to um, get in and, uh, and manage those. Uh, and you can mess around with things. Uh, and then you can revert it if you don't like it. So what's the recreate button? I mean, recreate on the previous page. Um, on the previous page. Uh, recreate. So if I wanted to change something, uh, I would go to recreate and add a component, um, like a view. Or actually, you know, you don't even have to add the component. If you make a change to a view, say, I do this all the time on my local development box, I'll make a change to a view and then recreate the feature. Um, so all you have to do is recreate and hit download feature. You don't even have to add it again. Um, if you've changed it on your development box and you recreate the feature, it'll grab that um, and uh, it'll get the new version. So when I'm doing local edits, that's exactly what I do. Is I make a change on my local, I go recreate the feature, uh, download the module, extract it, and commit it to version control. And then it can be pushed up to any server I want. Have you had any instances where your features that you made for clients like fork themselves and then fork? Yeah, like like say client A, the like variations of, of a feature that you created, the client B is like your original and have you had that situation before and how you manage it? Absolutely and that's why features is great because I can commit it to version control so I can have a version for each one. Um, so, um, you know, if you're a Git person, you can make a branch for that. Uh, or, uh, you know, as long as you've got inversion control, you're covered in that respect. There, yeah, Sam? Um, uh, talk about, I'm going to uh, ask a question about caching of the views. Does it, is it that the view in the code would be still quicker? Loading. The, view and the view that comes from files will be quicker loading than the view that comes from the database. Regardless of the caching features you turn on? You might be able to out-cache it, I don't think so, Kerry. I don't know. You know I, mean, I think that the, the, the speed boost from having in code is nice, but I think that in a major site where you, you're using other methods of caching, that it it's really doesn't isn't even yeah. Considered. If you're yeah, if you if you're doing a really good job of caching lots of stuff, the um, the speed boost is going to be minimal. But you know, as a general practice, it's faster to read things from files than it is from the database. So, yeah. Uh, right. So uh, so if you've got lots of contexts, uh, you've got you know if you've got. 15 or more contexts, a lot of times you're going to, uh, some are going to apply differently. Um, so you might uh, make a namespace for, you know, the front page or like a few special pages or uh, top level or something like that. Or you might have one for empty if you want things to appear in a modal and you want uh, nothing to show up. Uh, you might make a context um, that, uh, that has the empty pages or the front page or the top level pages. It's just basically an extra level of organization. Um, I, I find even in you know sites where I'm using 10 to 12 of them, I make them all sections most of the time. Uh, so I rarely use the namespace, but if you did have lots of them, it's a good way to, to organize them and keep them in mind. Anything else? All right, uh, Kerry? 
Let me just say one thing that if you're if you're just learning this with the thought to uh, you know becoming a professional, uh, learn this stuff because any shop that's operating you know in, in a current mode is going to want point you to be able to work with this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we don't really build a lot of sites that use tables for layout. <laughs> we, we we tend to you know want to use features and context as uh, that's that's today's stuff. Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, the more support it gets, the faster it's going to grow, the faster there will be contrib modules to move every piece over. So while it can be a little bit clunky right now in its current state with certain, certain parts, it's getting better. It's getting better really quickly, and it's getting support really quickly. So I highly recommend looking at it, using it, um, getting involved with it. Yeah? Is there any integration or conflict with the context inside panels? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a whole different. Um, that's a whole different. Yeah, that's a big can of worms. I was actually talking to the maintain uh, one of the maintainers of panels uh, recently about you know how to manage context, and they're actually kind of trying to solve the same problem. And yeah, they kind of fight. So uh, I, I I don't use them together. Uh, I generally don't use panels anyway for for big sites. Um, I, I, I use panels quite a bit, mm -hmm. and so would that be uh, would that be opening the can of worms to try to bring the context module into my sites that are heavy panel units? Um, it depends on how you use panels, really. Yeah. You know, yeah I mean, they, you know, that's a complex question. Yeah, that, that is a, a complex question. And, you know, there are lots of ways you can use it where they won't collide. You probably will have some problems with certain things if you're doing things that in certain ways. Uh, I'm not exactly an expert on panels because I generally don't use it very often, but um, it, there definitely can be some collisions if you use them in certain ways. So uh, just be aware of that. All right, great. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. At what point